consistency in what you purchase and what you train people to use is everything in this industry. Dilution control and having an acid. If you could do that right, yep. it would solve a lot of the problems that I see work at walking in buildings, of buildings we take over. I do not hate any of these chemicals, okay? If anything, it's just recognizing that they have a place, right? And that place is not in commercial cleaning. I always say, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, go with dilution control first, because you can control that. It's gonna be the same no matter what. What cleaning chemical and equipment does every commercial cleaning business need? What does a startup kit look like? We're excited to answer these questions in the second episode of the OctoClean podcast. I'm Matthew Stowe, the Chief Operating Officer at OctoClean, joined by OctoClean's Vice President of Compliance and Training, Greg Stowe. Hello. Who is also my brother. This is um, a really big topic, and there are so many different products and brands that you can be using, but not all of them will give you the results that you want or the compliance that you need when working in the commercial cleaning industry. Let's get started. So first thing to acknowledge is that we're in a different place today. We're, we are. We're in our training room um, here at OctoClean. Um, you can see it says OctoClean University. That's what we, that's what we name our, our, uh, our training. Um, you know, uh, uh, department. And so, Greg, you want to talk about, you know, a little bit like, what are we doing here? Besides, well, obviously train, but. Well, a lot of people like to control what they can't control when it comes to cleaning. And with us, a lot of that has to do with cleaning chemical. You know, what chemicals do we use? We want to make sure that that's, if we're having an issue, that's one standard thing that we always use. We actually have an approved product list of what our franchisees can only use. And we've been using, and a lot of people say, well, how long have you been using that? And like, I had a customer ask me that today. Um, one of our schools when I was like 15 years, probably the same thing. He's like, oh, okay, because it seems to be pretty consistent. Um, so along with training, this is what we do here. But we also, you know, make sure that cleaning chemicals, kind of like if you're baking a cake, you always want to have the same stuff to have the same product. So yeah. that's the way we look at with, with cleaning chemicals. So, but I, I think you're going to find that throughout this conversation, we're going to be talking a lot about consistency and re, you know, repetition, right? How can we uh, scale uh, and replicate the the quality of work? Um, and so th this topic, I think, is one of those things that like doesn't get talked about enough. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we spent we've been doing this a long time. Like back when you had hair um, in my hair on a different it. color, you had a lot of hair. Remember, well, we put some pictures, like see a little picture, put like a picture next to me. Like, he had like a little surfer haircut. It was like it. it was pretty sweet. I liked it. I was actually a little jealous. It went away. He, he had nice straight hair, and I was always really curly. But you know, fast forward thirty years and. I have straight hair, just super, super short. I'm showing it off. The super short, bro. Super short. Super short. Uh, but, you know, we didn't always have the chemical, right? But what we had was ambition and drive. And, and we didn't have the knowledge of the chemical. That's another thing. Like, we didn't know what yeah. chemical was even doing. Like, yeah. okay, well, that worked good. So I, I, I have an interesting question for you because I, I think we both have our own answers to this. Um, what would you say was the craziest thing... Uh, based on chemical tools and equipment, right, that we had back in, let's go back to like 90, let's go back to 96, 95, 96, let's just say the 90s. A story that you're like, dude, we should have never done that. We should have never had that process, that chemical. You're already probably going to know. I, already, I think I already know. But I, So I we got, cleaned a place called Empire Royal with my oh dad. God, yeah, the, this is the story. And um, Scott Alden, that's his name. Yeah, he was the God rest his soul, but he was the guy that was in charge. And um, I was young that time, early early twenties at the most. Yeah, and um, him and I would always like chat it out because he worked late. And he's like, "Well, I want you guys to strip the floors." And I'm like, "How BCT?" I'm like, "Oh, we got this." And of course, you know, I'm sure my dad charged him three hundred bucks to strip the floors. Um, maybe. Yeah, and we knew nothing. No, we knew that. I mean, this is before YouTube. You couldn't Google it. There wasn't any of that. It was you either knew it or you did it. Or so what we did is grabbed. I don't even think we had floor stripper at the time. We may have had floor stripper pouring it on just directly straight in a mop bucket. Event um, eventually, and and it was back then. It was home base. It was before. Yeah, it was before Home, home Depot. It was our Home base. Depot, and it was like let's go down and get some stripper at home base. So we thought, of course, you know. 
more is better, right? I mean, why not? I mean, if a little bit works okay, a whole lot should work really great. Um, yeah. I look back at that now, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, you use a shampoo on your hair without water is what basically what we were doing. Just yep. pour, pour it on. Yeah. So we spent probably, it was at least, it was Friday night, Saturday night, all day Sunday on our hands and knees, no floor machine, nothing, just scrubbing it. And it's still, honestly, come Monday, it would still look like crap. Yeah. So we go back in to clean on Monday, and Scott's sitting at his desk, and he's like, oh, Greg, we really have a problem. I'm like, well, of course I knew we had a problem. I mean, the floors look terrible. And he's like, no, Greg, we really have a problem. And he goes over to, he had a safe in the ground. A floor safe. Like a, yeah. back in the day where they, I guess, concrete, they put a, a, a round safe cover in the ground. And he opens it up, and there's probably 50 gallons of water in it Yeah. with all of his, like, sensitive documents and I'm sure there's money, all kinds of stuff in there. It's, a, it's an oil company, a lot of them. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I don't remember how that ended, but I know it didn't start well. So what what I remember about that night, because it, I mean, that was one of, the, one of the ones. There's a couple other ones that we got our hands on chemical, and it's like having the, the, the wrong chemical and in, in, like, the right chemical in the wrong hands. But Yeah, Johnson Machinery and Johnson Johnson Machinery. Machinery totally. the, but the, the worst thing about that night, that job, that whole weekend, was – putting on so much stripper that the finish turned into glue. Yeah. And we were stripping this stuff up with like razor blades. But these are the things you don't know that you don't know. And fortunately for the, our listeners, like they they have access to knowledge on how to do things. Like back in the day, it was learn trial and error like we did, which we did a lot of it. Um, find a mentor, which was not easy because let's face it. I mean, all of us are in this industry together. We're all listening to this podcast. This is a somewhat unusual that we're willing to give this information away. Yeah, I get that. Um, it's highly competitive and nobody wants to give away any information. So we didn't have access to it until we had a relationship with someone like, you know, Waxy Sanitary Supply back then was NSS. And they were able to help us out with, you know, some of the things that we needed to learn. But that night was one of the big ones. I'm going to give you mine really quick, quick story. Um, didn't know what I didn't know. Thought it would be a great idea to reuse a bottle um, that had um, hydrochloric acid in it. And I put bleach in that bottle without rinsing it out. Let's just say that I had to clear that building pretty quick. I mean, that was, um, I don't know if that's like mustard gas or something. I'm not a chemist. Okay, but whatever it was, I was running. Is there was a there was like a toxic cloud of stuff. Uh, we yeah. had that issue a few times, a few times, and you know. So I think our dad thought that was he was a chemist. Like, like I can mix this with that, yeah, and then th that works really good. So if I add a little bit of bleach and ammonia and acid bowl cleaner, and we go to clean a bathroom, we should be okay. Yeah, and it, no, again, it, it you know, be. if this sounds familiar, like we've all been through it, right? This is. If it doesn't come clean, keep throwing different chemicals and stuff. So, you know, the goal today is to really help folks out to help them understand that consistency in what you purchase um, and what you train people to use is everything in this industry, right? I mean, it, and it's not just chemical. It's the tools you use. It's the equipment that you use. The methods you train in. Right. Because what happens if you change a vacuum cleaner? Right, I, I go out and I buy a vacuum cleaner at Target, and it's a Shark vacuum, and I hand it to one of my employees, um, and they take it and they start vacuuming, and it breaks. Well, now I'm, I'm training them how to fix this vacuum because I, I have some knowledge of it. But then the next week, you come in and you bring them, uh, I don't know, a, a, what's another va vacuum? A Dyson, and so they're using a Dyson now, and they're like, okay, which you should, we should never be using those types of vacuums anyway, but. The point is, is that how can you be consistent in training and support of your employees if you don't have consistency with chemical tools and equipment? So we're really going to dive into this some more, and I'm sure we'll have some funny stories as we go. I'm sure uh, Because, uh, you know, there's lots of them out there, a lot of them. Um, you know, vacuum cleaners especially. Uh, I have a couple that, you know, blowing up vacuum cleaners. Um, yeah, fun stuff. So. Greg, tell me a little bit, because this is, I'm going to, you know, this is really more your topic. I mean, you spend a lot of time with our franchising and um, with employees on, you know, what products we use and so on. And you and I have both used a lot of different products from different manufacturers, but um, if you had to recommend brands for a, a, um, a, a company to start with, what would you recommend? 
I mean, first of all, you want to look at your budget. I mean, because you can go high end. You can go to like 3M. You can do waxy sanitary. You can do gen labs. I mean, when I usually go for what I recommend, I look at more, is it a professional? When I say professional, I'm not talking about um, some toilet bowl cleaner you find at the grocery store or the dollar store. Is it a company that makes commercial cleaning chemicals? Yep. And then I'll look for dilution control. Because not everybody you're going to hire is a mathematician. They're not going to know like, okay, two ounces to a gallon, but this is a 16-ounce bottle, so how am I going to do that math? They're just like, okay, if blue is blue, I'm just going to pour more blue or less blue if it's glass cleaner. Yep. Um, or a shade of blue. Or a shade of blue. Okay, well, this kind of looks like the right color blue. Yeah, and people look at that, and I, I always say, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, go with dilution control first because you can control that. It's going to be the same no matter what. I'm not going to, like this white table, if I put too much glass cleaner on it, maybe that blue is going to turn it blue. Yeah. Or it's going to stain it. Um, and another thing I always tell people that we always look at is we look at acids. So you have to have a bowl acid, some sort of bowl acid to clean. A lot of people are, well, why do I need an acid? And then we can get into, I could go forever about acids and alkalines. And, you know, like I always tell them, I was like, if you're going to, if water goes in it or if you use the toilet in it, toilet journals, you have to put an acid in it. Yep. You know, those basic things that are something that if you just put that in your head and your employee's head, which they could understand, like, okay, if that's all I have to worry about. That's why. Then you could get a little bit deeper if you needed to. But dilution control and having an acid. If you could do that right, yep. it would solve a lot of the problems that I see work at walking in buildings of buildings we take over. And honestly, it's, oh, you need to replace that sink because we can't get it clean. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Yeah. And then you go into the janitorial closet and you find um, Ajax. Yeah, Ajax. And they're, you know, scrubbing down sinks with, um, you know, with, with sandpaper, essentially. Basically, yeah. yeah. And, you know, a lot of what I see, too, with with folks when it comes to chemicals, in, you know, uh, in particular, is that there's a, um, uh, you know, there's something that, that this kind of falls like a, like a, like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a tradition of using certain products, right? Um, and it, that can be culturally, people will use more bleach than others. People will use certain products more than others because their mom used it, whatever it is. And those things are the things that trying to break somebody from using um, bleach. Bleach is a for, big one. For almost everything. Um, or, or Fabuloso, which I see all over the place. Um, you know, because it smells good. And I've, you know, I grew up in a house that everybody used it. Like, I get it. None of those things are dilution controlled unless you're using like a Clorox dilution control system for like C. diff and hospital. And even in, with that in a hospital, to kind of chime in there, it's we, I was working a hospital at the time and we were using bleach for our C. diff rooms. If you guys with C. diff, just Google it and you'll, I'm sure you'll get a lot of great pictures. Yeah. Sorry. Um, sorry. We won't talk about that. I don't want yeah. people out. And, um, had the state come in and said, well, how are you guys diluting it? And we were showing them how we diluted and we were diluting it properly. And they're like, you know what? There's no controls on that. Yeah. What if you're doing it wrong? What if someone else doesn't do it the same way? And they actually came back and put a dispenser in a dilution control dispenser that you put the bleach bottle in and you press the button and it sends the water and it does all that. Yeah. And then the surveyors were fine. But what I want people to like, I like just talking about bleach. Bleach isn't a cleaning agent. No. Bleach is an oxidizer. Yeah. You know, if I put bleach on your shirt, what does it do? It turns it white. Yeah. So people, a lot of times, I think, trace odors with bleach. We find that a lot. Oh. Like, if I have a restroom, what, what am I going to do? I'm going to bleach it. Yeah. So then you walk into the restroom in the morning, it smells like bleach. In the afternoon, it smells like urine. And what do the janitors do? Throw more bleach on Let's throw some more bleach on it. So, yeah. It, might it, worked, it worked yesterday. Yeah. So, so, you know, these are things that, and I, I, I want to speak more about um, dilution control systems because- um, and, and let's kind of give it some scales, right? So 3M, and then you have like diversity somewhere in here, and then you'll have some kind of uh, chemical dilution control system from your local, uh, whatever your local, regional, or national company is, like Waxy. Yeah, it could be Gen Lab, that has it, like that. Now. But the, the thing that I've found over the years is dilution control systems are not created equally, period. Right. So when we chose Waxy after many years of testing a lot of other things, the reason we chose it is because they had a lot of flexibility with dilution control. They had 
a wall-mounted unit that had quads. They had a wall-mounted unit that had two, you know, a dual, um, and they had a, a you know, a, a more of a portable, a portable um, that you could use. And and we found that most of our franchisees were going into buildings that were smaller, and they needed something portable. And so we were working on like, how can we eliminate this issue, right? Where they were saying, why I can't, I don't have a janitor closet to put up a quad or yeah. put up a dual, so I'm not going to use it. So now they go out and they're buying stuff from the 99 cent store again, and they use, I don't have it for an excuse. So you, you need to find something, a dilution control system, um, through a partner, through a, a, um, a distributor that's going to have um, a lot of different options, right? Not limited to just one type yeah, you're of- Yeah, bolted on the wall and you're, that's all you all only option you have. And if I was to piggyback on that, you want to have, like we'll bring up Waxy because we've dealt with, like Matt's saying, a lot of other deletion control systems. And some of them will give you a bag full of little tips that are blue, red, pink, whatever it is. And you've got to put them in to like, oh, it's this chemical. I got to put the pink with this chemical and the blue with that chemical, which is great for a manager, right? Yeah. So I'm a manager. I'm going to go in and I'll probably do it right. But then I run out of chemical and then, you know, Matt comes in and he's like, yeah, man, whatever. I want to get out of here. And he puts glass cleaner where general purpose cleaner should have been. And now I'm over diluting or under diluting. So what we really realized is we wanted a vendor that had your dilution control tip, so to speak, your metering inside the bottle. Yeah. So it had nothing to do with the machine, so to speak. And that's something that Waxy did provide us. Like the, their PDC has that every time you buy a new bottle, you get a new tip. That way your yeah. tips aren't going bad and you're not worried about, oh, I have to change it out. So the we always try to say is like idiot proof, right? Yeah. If you can press play, you're good to go. That's all you got to worry about. If it'll give you chemical, it's good to go. So, well, because ultimately, what are we trying to do as a as a a, a, a you know, commercial cleaning company for our our employees or for our franchisees? What we're trying to do is make it so that the the hardest thing that they have to do is to provide consistent quality service. It shouldn't be how do I mix chemical. It shouldn't be what chemical should I use. It, it really needs to be like, okay, I know this one does this, this one does this, this one does this. And there's, you know, a, a label on the on the the, um, the the concentrated bottle and there's labels on the secondary, you know, bot, on this, you know, secondary yeah. labels on the other bottle and they match and they're like, oh, I know what this is and I can train on that. And it, and, and keep your chemical amounts, you know, what you use to a minimum. It, we use it to be five. Yeah, it shouldn't be 20 things. You know, and if you need to expand on that, at least for us, if, if we're going to have to expand on beyond the five, it's likely it's going to be a disinfectant or something exactly. like that, or, or it's something specialty that we're going to have to train somebody on, right? Or it's a it's an item that a supervisor needs to come out and use. But all that to be said is that dilution control and find a really good, I think, regional, local um, company. Now, I, I'm going to say just one last thing about dilution control. I went to 3M, St. Paul, uh, Minneapolis, whatever. Waxy invited both of us out, but you weren't able to make it. We had survey at a hospital. Sorry about that. Um, you didn't miss anything besides a tornado. But anyway, um, one of the things that they did, I mean, when you go through this place, it's pretty impressive. 3M makes nothing, right? They make everything better. That's kind of like their thing. So we're sitting in this room, and they go through the dilution control systems, and they it, it was kind of embarrassing because Waxy was there. Um, but they pulled three different dilution control systems out and then theirs. And they ran it at different pressure, um, you know, from the wall, right? And they, they said, okay, let's see what the chemical looks like if we run it at, you know, 200 PSI on this one and, you know, 400 on this. And the, and the, the, the chemical dilution that came out of the 3M machine didn't matter what that PSI was. It was the same amount of product every single time. So if you're looking at, okay, I'm in a hospital, which is where we see a lot of 3M product. Yeah. If I'm in a hospital, I want to make sure that the efficacy of that disinfectant is going to be spot on every time. You should probably consider 3M because their dilution control systems have that integrity. You start looking at other types of things, you know, you could turn the water down a little bit, turn the water up a little bit. I mean, if you're just not in that high level of regulatory, you know, type of facility like a hospital, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Okay. But I, I will say, out of all the things I saw that weekend or that week, that was the most impressive thing that I saw. Um, so much so when I got back, I was like, well, we got to choose one building 
that we can, you know, do a 3M test on. And, you know, it was... It's good. It's, it's good it's product. It's good, but it is pricey. Yeah. 3M is very, very expensive. Very expensive. So, all right. Um, so all I would say on that is get us a consistent system um, and... Commercial product. Commercial products. Commercial products. So that goes into the next one. So what is different between commercial and regular products and why are they more expensive? So why are commercial products more expensive? But are they? Are they... I don't think they are. I mean, if you look at it, in, like in the classes that I teach, you know, the most expensive way to buy product is single use Windex type of type yeah. of purchasing, right? Or so you go to the, the 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 store and you have your ready to use stuff, and you're buying the bottle, the label, the trigger sprayer every single time, and you're throwing it out and you're buying it again. Yep. Um, you'll see a gallon, and we see that a lot, like with the waxy dilution control. Let's say Solsta, for example, you'll get a gallon of glass cleaner. It makes 200 or some gallons, and then you have a gallon of just, you know, pour it in and guess, and that one's 15, and this one's 38. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's cheaper. It's 15. Yep. Well, really, it's not cheaper because you're reusing your bottle. Um, you know it's going to make, if it says 250 gallons, it's going to make 250 gallons. Because it's metered. Yeah. And then you're also looking for your product liability insurance. That's the big one. Yeah. So it, when you're working in the commercial environment, you have to have an SDS. So safety data sheets that tell you, you know, what you're bringing in. So even if you're in a, even if you're in a building and you don't leave your chemical there, right? I'm Matt cleans a building. I clean a building and I clean with glass cleaner, general purpose cleaner. I clean with acid bowl cleaners, but I never leave anything and I bring it with me. I still have to provide that customer with what I clean their building with. That's right. No matter what, even if I don't leave it. So if you go to the grocery store, you're not going to get, hey, here you go. Here's your, you know your biscuits and your bread, and here's some glass cleaner, and here's an SDS for your glass cleaner. Yeah. Cause, and then your acids are the same way, your toilet bowl cleaners. They're not going to make them strong enough to hurt you. What, what do you buy in a store? Well, yeah, if you go to the store and you're buying Lysol toilet bowl cleaner, yeah, that is probably a phosphoric acid, and it's probably 1%. If you're going, and let's say Waxy has a product we use that's a phosphoric acid that it's called Bath Bright, and it's got like 21%. So if you imagine that, you look at the bottle as 100%, 21% of that is phosphoric acid. The rest are surfactants, cleaning, whatever science they put in there. Yep. Where the opposite is true with something you buy off the shelf. Yep. Because they don't want little Jimmy to pour it on his brother and, you know, other, you know, and then you know, end up going to, you and know, that buy, old, exactly. Like, yeah. No one's buying Lysol anymore. No one's right. buying the Lysol toilet bowl cleaner. Right. But for us, that's great because if you're in your house, you have what? three, four people at your house. Yeah. You probably don't use the bathroom 60 times a day in commercial buildings. You've got hundreds of people using the bathroom. I was going to say, it depends on where I ate that night before, but yeah. Taco Bell. Taco Bell, Del Taco, maybe. Um, But we, we, yeah. But here's the thing that's important, I think, to to remember too, is that, you know, when someone says it's more expensive, because we hear it all the time, all the time from franchisees um, or from an employee or whatever, you know, somebody who's like, oh, well, I have this great product and it's, it's that 99 cent, 99 cent store. It's if that's 1% acid versus 20% acid, how much more of that 1% do you have to use to get that toilet clean? I mean, probably a lot more. You're using but they're not more, going to. But they're not going to. They're going to use the same amount. So you're getting less efficacy for what you perceive as less cost, but it's actually probably 10 times more expensive. Just like the RTU, um, you know, window cleaner, ten times more expensive. Yeah, but it's, and again, it's breaking the norms of people's mindset, right? Like, well, my grandma always used it, my mom always used it, use Windex, use this, use that. I don't, I'm not a hater, just so we all know, because I got a bunch of crap from people on some of the comments when I was like, "What chemicals not to use?" I do not hate any of these chemicals. Okay, if anything, it's just recognizing that they have a place, right? And that place is not in commercial cleaning. It's not. So, you know, it's it's getting that stuff out of the way. And, and some of it's pretty toxic and nasty. But, all right, um, they're not more expensive. You need to do the math. The math will tell you that the per quart cost for a commercial product is significantly way less. Like the cents to a spray bottle. All right, so what items would you say are must-haves for someone getting started in commercial cleaning? Hey, listeners, before we dive back into the conversation, we have something for you. We created a complete chemical and equipment product list specifically for commercial cleaning, and it is free. 
To access it, click the link in the description of this podcast, fill out the form, only real emails please, and the list will be sent directly to you. This list is a goldmine of products we've used for years. Don't miss out. All right, back to the podcast. Um, I know for me, there's a couple must-haves. Like if I will go to a, go to clean, I have to have rolling trash can. Um, I would say a restroom tote. If you want to know what a restroom tote is, I think we all know what we're talking about. A little carrying tote. Uh, a little carrying tote with all the, your stuff in it, um, glass cleaners and things like that. Um, feather duster and a vacuum, preferably a backpack vacuum. Yep. So a rolling cart is an important part because we don't want to have stuff all over the place and you can keep everything in one one, one thing. So I, I like the apron around the cart. I mean, some people, yeah. some people would say, well, I like the top caddy that goes on it. I would say a rolling cart with the apron on it like because I can put trash bags in there and gloves and a scrubbing sponge and all the stuff that we want to put in there. But it, you know, bare bones, like what you have to have, I agree with you. It, it, it really needs to be the backpack vacuum because you can do a lot with that. Um, and, you know, for me, it's, you know, it's the feather duster. Got in a feather duster. You, I, lo- I love me some feather duster. It's so, hair looks all feathery. Yeah, that's exactly why. Um, not at all. But so it, you know, those are those are must haves. But that's like I, you know, have to do it. Like I said, bare bones. Yeah, you know, we have a we have a very extensive startup kit. But if like if I, I was you and said, Matt, I want you to get five things. Here's everything you have. You're in a room, and you can only pick five things. That's what I would I would say. Okay, so I'll give you my five. All right. So I'll do the card two, the rolling barrel. Can I put the apron on as one thing? Yeah. Okay, that's all one thing. Okay. Um, I do my feather duster, glass cleaner, all purpose cleaner, um, and towels. I, I can pretty much, but I don't have a vacuum, but you don't have a vacuum. I, see, worst case scenario, you could get rid of the towels and use paper towel. But I mean, you're wasting money, but you could, but you could do it. You could do it if you had to. You could do it. I, I'm not, you know, vacuum cleaners are important, but I'll tell you, you know, real true story. Vacuum broke in the middle of the night. We're in LA. We're an hour and a half away from our office. Um, I found a roll of tape. And yeah, I was, I was going just... around picking up stuff off the carpet with a roll of tape. I mean, so could you do it without a vacuum? Absolutely. Yeah, for one yeah, night. For one it's night. It's not sustainable long term. No. One night. Yeah. Well, the question, as it was, yeah, you know, it was like it was posed. It was a one night. What are the things you have to have? Yeah. Right. So, so then looking at the, you know, and when we start a new building um, anywhere, there's a there's a list of things, and that list is very comprehensive. Yeah. Um, it includes all the things you could possibly need in a building. So. You know, those would be essentials, but really a startup kit uh, for a new building is like 35, 40 things long. It is. And it can be uh, little things like dispenser keys and things like that. So Labels. And and, and so I would encourage anybody who's starting up a new building um, or starting up your company is create a list. What are the things that I have to have when I start a new building? Um, and, you know, and we have a lot of video content that talks about that, like that talks about you know, hey, what do you want on a, a, a cleaning cart versus a cleaning barrel and a tr- vacuum? So go look at that. There's a lot of good information online yep. about that on our YouTube channel, or I'm sure other yep. people have it as well. But um, that's really what it is, is like you need to have enough to clean it long term. One night, one, great, but long term, yeah, do it right. You need to, you need to have a kit list so yeah. that you can put all that together. Well, this is a fun follow-up question. So Let's say that, you know, you've gotten your business going, you start having some money. Um, what would you say, what are non-essential items that you would recommend that a commercial cleaning company add to their kits um, once they have the money? Once they have money to go, what are things that are like, you know, luxuries? So for me, um, what I've learned that people say non-essential, it's not really a cleaning tool. I'll have two things. Some sort of multi-tool, whether a Leatherman, something like that, because you're going to run into situations where you're going to need to get a wrench or a screwdriver or something like that. So I usually carry, well, I always carry a Leatherman in my car or my truck. Yeah. And if I need to tighten up a faucet that's leaking or my hose, I can't get off the thing, so I can't fill up my dilution control. And then the other thing that is cleaning um, is a Mr. Clean Eraser. And why I say that is because the 99% of the buildings we go to have flat paint. And they're always bugging us to get like a scuff off the wall. And we learned early on that if we're spraying it with glass cleaner and wiping it with a towel, it just makes it look worse. But a Mr. Clean Eraser 
can get you out of a jam a lot. Yeah. I I recommend the you know that's one and it, to be fair there there is a commercial equivalent to it. It's called a melamine pad. It's a melamine pad, but it was it was it's never been marketed well in no. a commercial market. So the one thing that I think I've seen that the the the, the consumer market has come out with that really killed it was the magic eraser. Yeah. Uh, it's such a great tool and everyone should have one sitting in a cart. Uh, we actually use them to have to do auto scrubbing and stuff like that. They have yeah. pads that are made out of them and work really great. They really do. Um, I would say a luxury item for sure would be um, a, a battery powered vacuum um, because true. you're going to save so much time. Um, any of you who are currently um, using a backpack vacuum with a cord, you know, you know the pain. Right, of going around a corner and pulling off parts of a of a cubicle partition, um, or going into a room um, or a suite and having to work, you know wind up your vacuum cord and go to the next suite. Especially in educational facilities, where oh. it's all outside. You got to go to one room and then you got to wind it up, and go to the next classroom yeah. and the next classroom. We're next classroom. You're going to save hours and hours a night by just considering that as a tool to use. But it's not something that you're just going to be like, hey, I'm willing to spend, you know. What seventeen, fifteen? Yeah, it's like fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars for a nice they're, one. They're not cheap, you know. Um, you know, it, it, people have a hard enough time getting a backpack vacuum yeah. at six hundred dollars or five hundred dollars, whatever they are. But it will, it will seriously pay for itself. So I would definitely say those three things. Um, and you know, we'll, you know, we've talked about auto scrubbers and things like that in the past. Those are great non-essential items. You can mop a floor um, over and over and over again. Um, but you're definitely going to have issues down the road. So I would say an auto scrubber would be another one that if you have the money, you should consider it if the facility is, is yeah. set up right. So um, and I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so if you want to go into some questions like from our people next, what do you want to do? Well, I think we should jump into this or that because I, it's always fun. Um, we do love this and that. Yeah. So, yeah. So this or that. Um, so you're asking the questions. I'm going to answer. Um, I, saw, I see there's not a lottery question on this this time. Thank you. No, there isn't. But I do have some questions that, you know, I've added a little bit later. Oh, okay. That you may not be able to see um, that you should like. Okay. Well, All right. So, let's do it. So um, this, is the, this is the segment in our podcast where I ask Matt questions, this or that. And he gets to tell me. Um, so some of these are meant to be funny some of them are meant to be a little more serious but we'll start with a funny one um the first one would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck um that's a lot of I, I, I i'm gonna tell you i'd rather fight 100 duck-sized horses i i, I really i really do uh, I, I think i would go with the one horse-sized duck because i'd run I'm not fighting. Well, I'm, I'm not fighting this. I don't know, man. This this kind of question's been asked before, and I, I, I and some someone uh, whoever I was listening to had a really good reason for why they said a hundred duck sized horses or whatever whatever it was. Um, and I'm just not that smart, so I don't remember. But um, I would go with a hundred duck sized horses. All right. Would you rather have an Olympic gold medal? Yep. Or a Nobel Peace Prize? Now, for us, I saw Oppenheimer. We yeah. do realize that Nobel created the whole Peace Prize because he created dynamite, right? Which he felt was like so bad. bad I guess could kill. I I would bro. I mean, I, and you get you get some way too smart on me, bro. Okay, so I, I'm going to say a Nobel Peace Prize only because I can carry that around um, to different places longer. I mean, sports, you, it's over. No, I, I, I would go with a gold medal. I would wear it like Mr. T. Well, I, I'm gonna I, so true story. I met a guy who was a gold medalist in um, swimming, but he was an older dude. I mean, he was like back in the '60s or something. He won it, right? He said like and, a senior tour tour of the Olympics. No, oh. no, no. When he was young, he won it. Oh. <laughs> he was young, um, and he was a um, a butler for like a very wealthy family. I'm sure he did very well. But he never, he didn't have any skills really outside of like his sport, right? Like he just did that thing. And I'm not knocking anybody doing it. Of course, not in our world because we're cleaners. But a Nobel a Peace Prize winner, chances are like you've got some That's stuff. Pretty you got That's stuff on for you, bro. He won one, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought. Um, 
would you rather eat the oldest thing in a customer's fridge or eat food off the bathroom floor in a brand new account? Yeah, I, I, I'll admit I've read this question. That's rough. And that, it, there's no right answer here. And this, there is nasty. Um, I, I, okay, so when we're sitting brand new account, we have to, we have to qualify that. Like we're working with Loma Linda Academy. They brand new built some bathrooms, right? Like brand new. New, okay, construction. We're new construction. That's fine. But we're not, but we're not talking about that. See, but my hospital thing in me just makes me cringe. So <laughs> usually the oldest thing in the refrigerator, just saying, our refrigerator might be ketchup. Is I'm going to say it's ketchup or a condiment. So I'm going to go with the refrigerator. I'm with you on that deal. Right. I think I'm going the same way. Yeah, let's go with let's go uh, with ketchup. Bad ketchup. Would you rather see into the future or change the past? This is an easy one for me. I don't know if I want either. Okay, so I'm I'm getting ready to send my daughter to college, right? And uh, you don't want to see. And I say I'm sending. It's actually my wife and I, but we're paying for her school. You're gonna get, like send her like through the mail. No, we're gonna have the driver there. But um, you could. Go I would go back to. I would go in. I would go into the past and say you need to save more money for this, because it's a lot more than I thought. Um, but I think that's I, a good I, example. I think I'd go to the past because I don't know if I want to know. I don't want to see the future because I mean, that wouldn't be very fun, dude. It was 110 degrees here the other day. I mean, it, it's hot outside. Imagine what it's gonna look like in 20 years. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to see what the future. Imagine what they're gonna look like in 20. Same. My kids say that. Like, you haven't aged since, like, 2011. You haven't? That's what my kids tell me. That's because you have no hair. All right, next question. Might have a good point. Um, would you rather have hair like mine or hair like Matt's? <laughs> um, well, think of the time you would save with hair like mine. It. Yeah, you're right. But I, I'm still going to go with my hair, though. I know. I'm still going to go with my hair. I would go with your hair, too. Thank you. Yeah, your hair is amazing. You're actually a nice guy. Um. All right. Any other this or that questions? I think we're good, man. All right. So what? Let's jump into some questions that we've gotten from our listeners. Spiffy uh, from Spiffy eighty six hundred. He asks, "What is the difference between a general surface cleaner and a surface and glass cleaner?" It's a good question. Go for it, Greg. I know how much you love answering this. Well, Spiffy, I I don't want to point out the obvious, but one of them can clean clean, clean glass. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you could take your guess on that deal, but um, I I want to say really much. That's the answer. One can clean glass and surfaces. Now, for us, I think Matt can you know chime in on this as well. We were using glass cleaner to clean surfaces for a long time. The reason we were doing that is because a lot of people went away from natural wood. Yes, when we were cleaning, people had like real wood it's tables, like, like real natural wood. Like you cut a tree down and make yeah. wood. It's now. Okay. Everything's from mica, basically, you know, wood chips squished in, and then they put a cover on it. So what we were finding when we were doing this is the general purpose cleaners, even the one we use, will streak. Yeah. So we were having to either come back or we were getting that complaint that, oh, the janitors use a dirty towel because I could see the streaks. Really, we weren't. We were using a surface cleaner, but the, it was streaky. But the glass cleaners seemed to have alcohol in them or some sort of, you know, chemical that makes them dry faster because it's glass yeah and that makes it so they don't streak it doesn't streak so what you're you're the the chemist guy um no. what's the ph scale of a uh glass and surface cleaner versus an all-purpose cleaner you're probably looking at the nines and tens okay so on the alkaline side right um now it's not just ph too there's like surfactants and things that are in a surface cleaner that may not be in a glass cleaner right strictly because of they need it to dry quick, and you need to not leave streaks on glass. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of glass cleaner or surface and glass cleaner um, for almost everything, with the exception of, um, like, greasy, nasty stuff that we need to use an all-purpose cleaner on. But if I'm going to get into that, I'm probably not using, I don't know what the pink one is. 200. It's 200. I'm probably not using 200. I'm probably using something with like a, a little, a little heavier um, pH on that, like uh, more alkaline. And the way that we train it, like with our team cleaning system, for us to have to be able to move around faster, use one. Product. We want to use one product. We might carry the second one in our pocket, yeah. or hang it off our pocket in case I like have a greasy hamper in here that I can't get off. And then I'll hit that, and then I'll clean it twice. But I'm not going to use surface cleaner all the time. And, and of course, using disinfectants, that's, you're using them as a, depending on the building, you're using those more or less, but, you know, a glass and surface cleaner. There you go. Oh, okay. So the next uh, person is uh, his or her name, uh, Patient Jorky 720. 
Uh, what if they have a Yorkie and they didn't, the I, Y just wasn't available? Like, I don't know how people come up with their usernames. God bless you. Uh, patient, let us know. Yeah, patient, Jorky 720 How can we get the cleaning products in your videos? Well, the cleaning products in our videos, a good question. They're all, as you see, waxy. So I don't know where you live. Waxy's not nationwide yet, um, but that's where we get them from. Waxy Sanitary Supply. So Google that. I think they go out as far, I think they just opened up in Texas. Yeah. So they're starting to move further out. Um, you know, they got purchased by a company from South America and they're starting to buy up a lot of smaller companies. It may take a while to get them out there, um, you know, to your area, but there has to be a competitor that, that, that does something or, similar to, to Waxy. Search, um, sorry, search Jansan companies. Yep. So just Jansan or janitorial supply. And I'm not talking about the janitorial store that's, you know, downtown Riverside. Yeah. That guy's not really going to get what you want. You're looking for something that's a bigger supplier. A big distributor. Yeah. Big distributor. Okay. All right. Um, at Park R72, I think we've heard from this person before. Yeah, that's our boy. I know. Yeah, you're, you're, a, you're, you're a, loyal, a loyal follower. What are auto scrubbers most appropriate for cleaning? Question mark. Large areas? Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. Finger space. Uh, so we use auto scrubbers. I mean, they have auto scrubbers now that are designed for any type of space. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is the smaller they are, they seem to be the more expensive they are. Yeah. Uh, so, well, because they're very, you know, the smaller ones that you're talking about, know, like the micro something. Right? The ice scrub. Ice something that cleans the bathroom because they don't um, they, they don't sell a lot of them so they have to charge a lot for them they're specialty items like the bigger ones that are like 21 to and bigger um path those are going to be you know a lot more i mean economical park r what i would say with that is if your building has hallways long enough that you can turn an auto scrubber around in you should use you should use an auto scrubber well and here's what i look at with this is is liability right um potential work comp claims if I have somebody mopping a floor for more than 20 to 30 minutes a, at a time, I probably need to consider an auto scrubber. Yeah, right. so that I would say what, gyms? Gyms, um, buildings with a lot of hallways, a lot of hallway like stuff. Hallways, um, so hospitals, medical facilities, um, auditoriums. And you'll like see that. those hospitals and medical facilities will have those simply because if you think about it, you're dropping clean water on a dirty floor and you're picking it right back up. Yep. You're not going to recontaminate. So you look at infection control. That's another option that people use auto scrubbers for. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So our next question is at user um, ND6R. What? Okay, I'm sorry. I will have to put your name up because you I, almost have every alphabet left. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I, I, if if I. They probably had that alphabet soup and they just like picked up the spoon and that's what it said. It looks like Sesame Street to me. Um, how do you get your rags laundered? Um, are the employees in charge of laundering their own rags? If a separate person does it, do they launder them at a laundromat? All right, that's a good question. So what we want to focus out here is, okay, that's a good question. What we want to really focus on is what location are you at? You know, is that regulated by some sort of regulatory body? You know, or if you're in a hospital, you have to have reports that show towels in, towels out, how they were, were actually cleaned, temperature reports, um, water's got to stay, you know, hot for a certain amount of time. That's something to, that a linen company we would use. We would use that. If we're looking at stuff that's not, let's say I just have a regular cleaning business, I'm cleaning a distribution center. 99% of those times we're cleaning our own. Here we have commercial laundry on site for that type of environment where we're washing ourselves. Um, can you take them to a laundry man? Yeah, if you want to. Um, I know with ours, I wouldn't wash my clothes after, you know, I wouldn't bring my clothes here to clean them. No. Because, of course, we are, you know, using those. And we have, for you guys that are cleaning at home, a couple tips, because we did that for a long time. We used to clean our towels and mops at home. We did. And we go through a lot of washers and dryers. And Matt could probably talk to you about that. What we found about our mops is that um, the mops ruin your dryer because they're so heavy. Yeah. So we went through a lot of dryers. Um but I would say, first of all, is use microfiber. Yeah. Um, no bleach, no fabric softener. So what does that turn into? About five years ago, there was a study that came out about that where the 
people in the hospitals were afraid that, okay, well, I can't use bleach to kill the germs and all the bacteria in my microfiber. How am I doing that? Heat. Heat. Hot water. Yep. High temp. That's what's killing it. So if I'm looking at that in a household environment, keep that in mind, is hot water and then dry them. Don't hang them out on the line and let them dry out there. You know, in Alabama, it's hot in the summertime and you're hanging them out and they're dry. You put them in the dryer and keep them hot for a certain amount of time and it kills the germs. Um, I am gonna, I'm, I'm going to um, speak to the, the, should our employees be doing it? Um, take every opportunity you can to go out and see your employees in their own buildings. Right. So the answer is absolutely not. Your employees should not be cleaning their own towels. That's your job. Um, what you should be doing is going over and picking up towels and dropping off clean towels. So you should have a, a, a stock of, um, you know, dirty and replacement. Right. Um, so you're at least showing up at the building once a week, um, if not more, to drop off towels. And that's a great excuse for you to go out and do a QA, um, do some training and work with your employees. Right. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not judging user ND6RS Sesame Street, um, but I'm telling you that you, if you're asking the question, I'm concerned that you may not be going out to see your buildings enough. And yeah. so go see your employees. Your employees want to see you. They don't want to see you only when complaints are happening. Right. So um, because even us, we do it. I mean, well, we have someone here yeah. that does our laundry, but I'll bring them out and swap them out. Yeah. Or I'll have one of my managers bring them out and swap them out on purpose. It's it's designed into it. It's designed. It's into not it. like, hey, Sarah, come pick up your towels because you know what? Yeah. So come. Well, I got to tell you, um, you know, there's a lot of good information from this um, this pod, uh, the, you know, this podcast, and and it's really just, you know, tip of the iceberg stuff. But the main thing that um, I hope that everybody takes away from this is standards matter, like having a set number of chemicals, dilution control. Um, a product list, um, a tool list, a equipment list, um, so that you can consistently provide training to your employees, right? And you can consistently replace items without there being a lot of different types of things that the employee would see. It should be one thing. It shouldn't be a bunch of different things. So uh, if nothing else, I hope that's what they got out of it. But um, we want to thank everyone. Um, and really, I want to thank you, Greg. Is, thank you. You know, this is, this is your big topic. Uh, I could go all day. Yeah, you know, I'm sure I got someone saying, "Hey, you guys are going too long." Yeah, dude. We, at the end of the, it all, we're just cleaning geeks and janitors. Like we love what we do, um, and more than anything, we love to be able to give things. Like we're like the the parents who want to give better to their kids. Um, and for us, it's giving better to our employees, our franchisees, things that we could never get, things that we never had. Um, and that's better tools, better products, better equipment. So. Um, so we want to thank everyone for watching um, or listening to this episode of the Octa Queen podcast. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, please like and subscribe. And if you like my hair, give us a thumbs up. Yes, please. I, actually, I'd love to see a lot of thumbs up. Maybe they even. How about this? If we get a lot of thumbs up, I'll come with a wig on. Okay. And, and like a legit wig. And you guys can pick the wig. Oh, okay. I, I, maybe just like an emoji. That they put it into the comments section. Okay, you want to do that? Uh, what emoji? Like, of just the, um, I don't, I'm, I'm not, dude, I'm old. Like, I don't know what emojis. Um, is there like a hair emoji? Like, there has to be. All right, you guys take it upon yourselves to figure that out. Uh, but please leave a comment um, with the topics that you want to discuss next time. Um, if you're listening, don't forget to rate and review the podcast um, so that we can get in front of even more people like you who will benefit from the information that we're sharing. Um, yeah, until next time. And then again, if you guys want to have a certain topic, like, hey, I'm really struggling with this. Yep. Go ahead and throw in the comments. Like, we'd like to have a topic about interview tactics because a lot of people are doing that. Like, we struggle. We've been doing this a long time, but a lot of our franchisees we talk to, are like, how do you interview? Who? What questions do I ask? What's a good, you know? Yeah. Maybe that's something. But if it's anything else, let us know, yeah. and then we can get with our team and say, hey, look, let's do a podcast on whatever. So, all right. Very good. Well, we'll see you in the next episode and thank you very much. Thanks guys. Let's get, let's get this thing going. Your hair looks great. Thanks. Your hair looks good too. Thank you. I didn't cut it a bit. I was afraid of my, I can tell you got a little, little watch. I want to take the shine away. Like a little five o'clock shadow going on there. Okay. Got you. All right. Are you ready?